I want to let you know if you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a consultant, and you're looking and struggling to elevate your leads and to accelerate your credibility, you want to go to GetPaidWithPodcasting.com. There we have a free training coming up. So go to GetPaidWithPodcasting.com so that you can ultimately put your credibility on Accelerate, all right? Be able to generate more leads and take your voice and be able to turn it into a profitable cash machine. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and you all know that this is your go-to spot for podcast news, podcast how-tos, but I'm excited about newly adding on interviews, right? And and, and today's guest, man, I don't, I don't want to waste any time. I want to go ahead and just get to this gentleman because, uh, man, just, just seeing the work that he's doing and just watching him grow, I'm excited. Uh, for him personally so he he's the founder of the he's the founder of the built for this program and he's also the host of the ridiculously blessed podcast you can catch streaming on youtube right now he's also a habit strategist without further ado welcome to the your podcast mentor show mr tim jackson what's going on brother what's going on man thank you for having me here today yes sir yes sir Ex- excited to excited to have you but man tim go, go ahead and just just take a just take a few minutes or so man and just for people if this is their first introduction to you man go go ahead and just share a little bit about yourself T- take your time take your time all right all right my name is tim jackson i am a habit strategist and you know i create routines and help people create routines and make their life more efficient and effective um you know, I spent years in uh, management roles and I took all that information and was able to put it into my life with my everyday experiences to create something that's going to, you know, help a lot of people be more efficient than they've ever been in, in their lives. Um, I am also, as he said, the host of Ridiculously Best Podcast, which uh, wouldn't be here today without your host. So uh, we'll get into that, I'm sure. And um the name of my program is called Built for This because we were created to be successful and we are built for this. Yeah, yeah, man. I I, I love that. So rewind us back. Tim, were, were you always gifted like with just around creating routines and around building out successful habit? You you gotta walk us back, man, because there's a lot of people out yeah, here yeah. struggling. Talk, talk, <laughs> man, talk, talk to us, Tim. Talk to us. All right. So I was gifted at keeping myself below the radar, if it makes sense. So um, in school, you know, I was I was a pretty smart kid and a lot of things seemed to come easy. But I was one of those kids who, you know, I didn't want to be top of the class because they expected that all the time. You know, you can't slack if you're the top of the class. Didn't want to be at the bottom of the class because I didn't want to be called out because if your parents are like my parents, they did not play that game. So, you know, it was, it was real tactful that I would... Uh, kind of stay just below the radar. Well, that allowed me to be overlooked, which wasn't a good thing I come to find out because I graduated high school with no plan for what I was going to do. Um, I allowed myself to be overlooked and I was part of a school system that didn't mind me letting myself be overlooked. So um, I graduated high school, had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I live in an area where it's pretty rural. So most people worked at the local factories. You know, you can make what's called good money Mm -hmm. at the local factory. So, you know, that was my, that was my plan when I graduated. Let me get a job in a factory and make good money. Um, What I didn't take into account is that I would hate it. Um, I hated the getting up, you know, day in, day out, same concrete walls, that kind of thing. But I did that for about 11 years and I wanted to get into management. And it was pretty obvious to me that that wasn't going to happen at that facility And I got an opportunity to do so at another company. And they invested time into me um, along with my work ethic, which, you know, came from my my parent. My dad was a supervisor, so I got to see, you know, how he did um, in his day to day. But over the course of that time at that factory and also um, a management career with this other company, I started to take notes on, you know, how I got through my days. And there were ups and downs. But I noticed that there were some days were better than the, the others. So 
I started to try to recreate what I did to make those days better. Mm. And I started to incorporate what I saw from the top 1%. You know, I, I read books where top 1%, you know, they woke up at a certain time. A lot of them would say 3.30, 30 in the morning and, and people went to bed at the same time and they spent time reading. And, you know, there were different things that the top 1%, you could go to each one of them and, and they were all doing something similar. So I started taking notes as to what they were doing and incorporating those things into my day-to-day -day life. Um, I hated reading, but I saw that the top 1% read. <laughs> so I read 10 pages a day daily to make sure that, you know, my mind was fresh. Um, I, I had trouble with waking up early. The top 1% got up at 4.30. So I thought, well, I'm getting up at 4.30. I'm getting up at 3.30. And it did help my day get started, but I was dragging by midday. So I was like, maybe this isn't for me. But I was able to take my life experiences and put those in together. And I realized that what was important was the amount of time. It wasn't necessarily wake up at 3.30 in the morning and grind all day and then grind all night. It was, okay, if I wake up at 5 a.m. and I'm going to bed at 11 p.m., I have the hours in between that time to be as productive as I possibly can be. And that is what um, changed my life. It helped me to be way more efficient. Um, writing down what I was going to do for the day helped me be more effective. And then as I taught these things to my team, they also became more efficient and effective. And uh, we, I write them down in what's called a rhythm. And the reason I do that is I have a daily task list, and I have weekly task and a monthly task or goal. Now, each day that I do the task on that list, I can check it off and track it. If I'm working with a team, let's say we're working together, we're working on the same project, all the tasks are listed. Anything that I do, I can check off and you can come right behind me and see what I've done. And there's no time waste there to find Tim, find out what he's done and understand it. You know, Tim did this, so I'm on to the next thing. And man, it really changed the way that my team performed. We went from one of the lower um, scores in our, in our market to one of the higher ones. And it helped me get noticed and it helped my team get noticed because I knew that I had to invest in them if I wanted to move up. And that process worked well until, like anything else, I hit a brick wall. I had, um, let's just say I had a, uh, a manager that we didn't see eye to eye okay. <laughs> on, a, on a couple of different things. And um, not, to, not to ramble again, but we didn't see eye to eye because... Um, there was a difference. Let's just say there was a difference. And what happened was that person's negativity started to pull me down a bit. So I dreaded going to work. Now anxiety kicks in when I go to work. I'm struggling to get through the day. At the end of the day, I may have to come home and have an adult beverage because it was just so much that day. And I started to get away from the exact principles that carried me and got me to that point until I realized um, something was said to me that was so horrible, that hurt, that hurt so bad, that I had a moment to think about it and realize, you know what, I'm in control. You know, I'm, I'm built for this. I can take whatever is given to me, that God prepared me to be the victor at the end of this, that all I have to do is endure and trust the skills that were given to me throughout the years. So I went back to waking up at a certain time, going to bed at a certain time, I went back to reading 10 pages a day. I went back to meditating and praying daily, um, you know, in the morning, 10 minutes, at lunch, 10 minutes, in the afternoon, 10 minutes. I went back to affirmations. And all these things have been taught to me for years, and I knew them, but I got away from them because I was focused on the negativity that was in front of me. Um, so we got through that situation. Um, I continued to progress on. And I got to know the new managers that were in my life. And I got to see how they handled situations. And it opened my eyes to let me know that that's, that's not what I want. So I equated it to you're climbing this mountain for years and years and years. You get to a rough part, slip a little bit, but you regroup, continue to climb. And I got to what I felt like was the peak and got a peak over in the other side and realized that's not what I want. <laughs> So I needed to start over again, which 
led me back to this um, kind of rediscovery period to try to figure out what I wanted to do. And my passion is in the habits and routines. And I want to show others how to um, be able to set the process and, you know, get going in their lives and be more efficient and effective. Man. So long Damn. intro, but man, no, that's no, so no. man, you, you came on this thing with <laughs> fire, bro. You can't. So one, the, the reason, the reason I want to, I want to just, uh, just, just, just re recap a few of the things you said, cause I don't want people to miss it. Cause you came on, you came on not giving no fluff, man. You came on with your introduction. You came on just with some strategy out the gate. I'm like, whoa, hold on, hold on. So, so first of all, one thing that you said just when you were wanting to be productive, you said that you said you set the time that you were going to wake up because you you saw what mm -hmm. the one percent were doing, right? So you were like, okay, if right. I if I want to get a jump. I'm going to do what I've seen other successful people do. So you say you set the time you wake up, then you said you went back mm -hmm. and then you say you created a system. You created a system yes. with when you were working with your team to where, you know, they would be able to put the check or you would be able to put the check and then time wasn't wasted yeah. because, you know, that system was in place to help you and to help the team. Then you, you said when you understood that as you raise others, and as you elevate them, then the whole team, everybody looks good, right? So you're, 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 you're doing that. Then you said you created the rhythm, you know, just having, having a mm -hmm. rhythm, having a flow, the way things are going, the way things are moving. And then, man, that, that, I got some other stuff down here, but I'm, I'm gonna kick it back to you in just, just a second. But, but you <laughs> shared these three R's that, that I think are so powerful and can apply in business and even can apply just wherever people are in their journey, because you said, you were seeing the way things were going. You said you had to regroup. Then you said you had to reclimb the mountain. And then you said where you are now, you're in a space of rediscovery. Tim, man, yes. you yes. I don't know if you know you said all that, man, but you was, hey, that was some fire, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, that, that's, that was the journey. And that journey didn't, it, you know, it was a nine, 10 year journey. Um, so you know, there were times where it was smooth and easy. And there were times where I was like, man, I cannot do this. And, you know, everything in between is happening. But man, the, when I started to put the system in place and I created space for everything, even, you know, time with my family, you know, all of those things had to be put into that space because if it's important to me, I needed to create time for it. And my time with, you know, my wife, my kids, all of those things had to be a part of this schedule and it had to be an important part of the schedule because for a long part of that time, I was working for a career. So in working for a career, that was my focus. I'm putting 80 hours in and we're looking like we're winning, but what was that doing to my family? So the system was important to keep the family structure together. Um, I had to, when I went back to, as part of that regroup, my family had to be a part of that because they saw the wear on my face. My kids were, you know, somewhat young, but they could see that, you know, fun dad doesn't always come home. He's worn out. My wife could see that he's going to need five or 10 minutes to regroup before I can just like hand him the baby or say, Hey, what are we doing for dinner? And man, my support staff at home, my, my wife, you know, my kids, um, my in-laws, my mom, were great in that because they could see when I was off track and they helped guide me back, but it's all a part of the system. It's all a part of the system. Yeah. Yeah. So Tim, man, let's just talk for a second about the people who don't have the system, right? Let's say this is mm -hmm. somebody who is, who's just struggling to do something consistently, right? They, they, they don't have habits. They they're aware enough to realize that they don't have habits and don't have a system. What, like, what would you tell that person? How would you begin to guide them in the right direction? The first step is the first step. That's the biggest thing I would say to them is the first step is the first step. Find one thing that you can add in today and do that. And then after you get that to where it feels like it's routine, then find the next step. But the problem is, is when you're spinning your wheels and you're going through life, there's so much going on. You don't have time to sit and actually think about what the first step is. Um, there were many days where I just knew I had a long list of stuff that had to get done and I'm just fighting at it and, and treading water and treading water and treading water, 
when it could have been so much easier if I took five minutes to actually think about the process, think about the way that it could be easier and then do it. But instead, I'm just fighting. I was you're a natural fighter. It's about, you're in survival mode. So you're trying to survive instead of getting to the striving and thriving part. So yeah, the first step is the first step. Figure out what's that one thing that you can knock out today that could start you on the on the process. That's good. That's good. Cause that's also something you said earlier. Well, I, I'm marrying the two. What you said earlier, you you basically were saying when you didn't you were struggling to read or didn't want to read. But then you said you started small, right. 10 pages, 10 pages, yes, 10 pages. Yes. So yeah, man, I, I, I really, I really love, I really love that. Just, just with the, with the first step and, um, and, and just how you say the first step is the first step. Just start, start small. First step is the first step. Start moving. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So, so, yep. so Tim, t- talk to me a little bit, uh, man, talk to me a little bit about the, the, the built for this program. Like, like what, what, what is, what is the built for this program and, and why did you determine that now was the time for this to be created? Okay. The, the built for this program is actually the process that I went through, um, to be, um, at that point where I felt like I was the most successful that I had been or the most productive that I had been. And it starts with small steps. So, um, you create, you create the goal that you want. Okay. That's your elephant. And then I'm going to teach you how to eat the elephant one bite at a time. Okay. So we break it down into steps that you can just attainable steps, things that you can do and win and feel the rewards along the way. But these steps are all the way across the board. It's not just business. It's not just health. It's not just relationship. It's everything because you have to get into a balanced routine in order to be successful. And the main thing is the mindset, the mindset of built for this is to know that you are capable of doing anything you put your mind to. If you put the effort there, um, my dad used to tell me, you're going to run up against people who are bigger than you. They're going to be faster than you. They're going to be smarter than you, but if they outwork you, that's your fault and you can't blame anybody else. So in times of, of, uh, I would, I would hate to say failure, Um, But in times of failure, that's the first thing that he would tell us to do. My dad used to say, look back. Did you do everything that you could possibly do to be successful? If you didn't, you need to start there because you controlled you. You don't control your teacher. You don't control your boss. You don't control the government. All right. You control you. So stop being the victim is what he would tell me and, and go back and regroup and see if I did everything that I was supposed to do. And that's what this program teaches you is. Uh, the simple steps to do the things you need to do to be successful. How, how does, how does one shift their mindset to, to, to be in the, in that space? Because you, you said, just like what you're saying, as you're recalling, you know, what, what your father would tell you and saying, you know, you can't control the government, you can't control other people or this or that. Cause I know a lot of people they will sit there and watch the news and then they'll project yeah. <laughs> what they saw on the news and their feelings towards everybody. Else. So how, how does one, how does one shift from, you know, not being as self-aware to being in the spot to where they're saying, you know, I'm owning who I am, my actions and everything like that. Right. Two things. One is self-assess. You have to be able to self-assess where you are in in your life. Second thing is get around the people that are where you want to be. Um, if you like, if you want to be a podcaster, get around other podcasters, you, you're going to learn um, from being in that in that room and in that realm. And part of Built for This is it's a program that's like a membership program and we have accountability inside the group. Um, so that if you're, anything that you're doing, I mean, the, the, it's professionals through all, from all flocks of life and they help each other through the process. If you're having a bad day, somebody's there that can pick you up. If you're in your business and you have one spot in your business you can't fill, well, the odds are someone in this group knows someone who can fill that spot. So um, being with a group of other accountable human beings would help. And then um, you're being self-aware. That's good. That, that's, that, that's, that's good, man. That's good. So you, I mean, you, you, I mean, you kind of gave me the softball pitch to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just (laughs) knock it out the park. So you, you, you talked about, you talked about podcasting, Tim. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's just rewind the clock back to, to where j- j- I'm, I'm just going to hand it over to you, man. I'm just going to kick it to you. You, you, you just, right. you just tell your podcast <laughs> story, man. Just tell your podcast story. <laughs> All right. 
I got you. I got you. So, so this time last year, if you would have said to me anything about a podcast, I'd have been like, man, you're crazy. There's no chance. And, um, we're part of the, the morning meetup and everybody was talking about podcasting. And I'm a part of the group, and I would tell you in the time I've been there, I may have gotten on the talk maybe five times because I'm so introvert. I didn't want to turn my camera on very often. I didn't want to talk very often. So I never believed that it was a chance. But something told me when you first offered um, the five days of podcast challenge, I was like, man, just do it. What's it going to hurt? And I signed up with you, never did a thing. The first time I never did nothing. I was too afraid, backed out, never did one step of it. And then again in October, you you had another offer for it. And I remember signing up thinking, okay, this time I'll listen. And you hit me back in a DM. You were like, hey, man, excited to have you here. Man, so you're in, right? <laughs> and I remember once I got that, I was like, oh, man, now he knows I'm here. Ah, gotta do it. But what I didn't take into account was one, the amount of information you gave us in five days, man, was unbelievable. You let me know that I had everything that I needed to be able to get started, that the only thing holding me back was me. So like you gave me that belief and you put me on the spot. It was like, Hey, tonight I need you guys to get on camera and tell me why you're here. And I remember going out to, I think I went to my truck and sent in the truck and did it real quick, like hoping nobody's looking or anything like that. And after I did it, had to hit send, not even look at it. It was like, I'm not going to Facebook to see it. I don't want to ever see it. Um, never want to hear my voice on there. I was like, man, my voice is horrible. Don't want to hear it. But what you did in that one week and having me repeat these steps and putting me in a room or a group of people who were doing the same process and being able to see their wins, being able to see if they had trouble, what it was, and you give them a strategy to, to defeat it, gave me the confidence to just say, go for it. So I made a deal with myself that I was going to do six episodes. I was like, I'll do six episodes. That way I could say I did it and, and I'm done with it. Never have to do it again. What I didn't take into account is that I actually enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed the information I was getting from other people. I got used to being in front of the camera where it doesn't bother me as much now um, until I think about it like I'm talking to you now. But um, all those things, man, it was just very deep down inside. And if you didn't have that program, if you didn't reach back out to me to say, hey, brother, I'm glad you're in, it may not have happened. So you know, I feel like God put put you in that place to get me to this space um, where I can do a podcast and feel comfortable, where I can now look at it not even a year later and say, I want to be better at this and invest the time into getting better at it. Um, where, you know, I'm a one man show trying to do my podcast, but I'm learning so much and everything that I'm, I've learned came from you teaching me and getting me going on those five days. So yeah, man, a year ago, there's no way I would have said I would have had a ridiculously blessed podcast or anything like that. It, it, I wouldn't have said I'd be sitting down talking to Jonathan Jones doing an interview. Like it, it was unheard of. That wasn't going to happen. But you helped get the ball rolling to, to go in that direction. And, and man, it's been a tremendous blessing in my life to be able to to, to learn those things and do those things and come and talk about it. So, man, I, I appreciate you for that. And that's why it's wild today that you're interviewing me. I was like, man, how does this, how does this happen? <laughs> but, um, man, God works in mysterious ways, man. And, and, you know, I count it as, as a blessing to be here doing this today. Yeah, man. Wow. You got me over here. I'm halfway. Like my eyes was getting a little watery up under here, Tim. <laughs> getting a little watery up under man. here. Oh, man. Yeah. But man, yeah, definitely praise God, uh, man, for just, you know, just, just being divine. But I'm just excited for you and just your obedience to the, to the tugging and the pulling on your heart, man. Because you know, there, yeah. there, there, there's a lot of other people out there who are saying they want, they're in the same spot as you. They're saying they want to do it. They're saying, ah, I think I should maybe, 
I'll do it tomorrow and, and, and all these other things. So, man, I, I, I commend you, but I, but I have to, I have to ask you, man, what, what would you tell somebody else if, if they're the version of you a year ago, what, what would you tell that person who's saying that, you know, they, they want to do it, but they're, but they're just unsure. Like what, what would you, what would you tell that person to encourage them? Right. I would say fear is natural. But um, as we've heard, fear and faith are the same thing. It's, it's, it's both believing in something that hasn't happened yet. So as a believer, as a believer that all, all things work together <laughs> for, for your good, why not go out on faith? Why, what, what's, what's the reason? Not everybody's going to like my voice. I had to learn that. Not everybody's going to want to hear this little country twang I got coming out. But there is someone out there that, that will want to hear it. There is someone that it will resonate with. And it would be selfish of you, person who's waiting, to withhold that gift and, and not give it and, and spare that one person that's out there just waiting for an opportunity or a reason to believe. You know, there, if you turn on the TV today, there is a million different reasons to not believe and to not have faith. But why not be that one reason that there is to have faith and to believe and to know that you are more, and again, self-plug, to know that you're built for this, that you were created to be something more than a worry ward, that you were created to touch lives possibly all over the world. You just never know who's going to see your video. So don't hold back on that. Don't just keep that to yourself. Um, my one of my favorite things is doing good in the world. Like my favorite scripture is Galatians 6 and 9. And it's uh, don't grow weary in doing good for in due seasons you shall reap if you faint not. So it tells me don't give up. Don't stop doing good. Continue to do the things that you were raised. You know right from wrong for the most part. Everybody does. Um, you know how to touch people's lives. So be a blessing. Be a blessing to someone. Man, man. Got me preaching, man. Man, I, I, man, I hear you. I say, Tim, do you speak? Like, do you go out and do the public speaking thing, man? Because <laughs> no, man, it's another fear, man. I, I, I can, but I haven't. Let's put mm. it like that. I think I can speak, but I have not. Uh, okay, okay. You can't hang around me too much longer, then, because you know you're gonna mess around, and be speaking around here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, but Tim, Tim, man, what, what, what? Well, talk, talk to me about this, then, because you said you were fearful of your voice. And what people might think. Yes. But what was it that actually yes. got you over the hump? Because I mean, you know, I, like I know you were part of the program and the challenge, but I wasn't the one that got mm -hmm. you over the hump because that was in your mind. Right. So how did you get over that hump? It it was the it was the again the why not why why are you being selfish why not if if so, if you do it and people will hate you. What's the worst that's going to happen? You've tried it. You had the experience. You learned. You take that because there's no such thing as, I don't call it success and failures. I call it lessons and blessings. All right. So if I failed at being a speaker, if I failed at being a podcast host, that's just a lesson. It's something that I can learn from that. I can extract that lesson and move on with my life and be better. Um, if I do well, then that's a blessing. <laughs> um, it, it, I have to understand where it came from. Like, yes, I sat down and I got in front of the camera and I said, and I did the interview, but that's still a blessing. You know, it didn't have to happen. It, it's, it's not a right. It's a privilege to be able to do a podcast. It, it's not a right. It's a privilege to be able to speak to kids and adults throughout the world. So we have to look at it as such. Like I'm supposed to be a tool that's used to help better people's lives. So that's a blessing to be able to be in that space. And that's how I had to look at it. I had to get away from being afraid of someone may laugh at me and think about, but what if you do well? What if you do a, a good job? Um, what's the impact if that happens? And it, it kind of helped me get over that fear um, and go jump with no net and see what happens. And if, if it didn't work out, I'm sure there's a lesson there that I can use in something else. Tim, man, I, I don't know if you're a chef, man, but you're over here cooking. That's all I know, man. You're over here, you're over here cooking this thing. So so let people know what, what they can expect to hear, uh, what they can expect to hear when they tap into the Ridiculously Blessed podcast. Let, let people know what, what they're getting. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and the, the Ridiculously Blessed podcast was created because there's so much negative news and TV and things out there, and you always hear bad about people. So I wanted to create an environment where it's positivity, where you, you know we, we do discuss having faith and we discuss the role that it plays in our lives. Um, we discuss, you know, I, I've interviewed people who are successful in different industries. And, you know, ask them about the lessons that they've learned along the way, um, the blessings that they have now and, and, you know, how did they get to that point? So I wanted something that was entertaining, um, that was positive and uplifting because I got tired of turning on TV and seeing um, the negative things. Now, there's a, there's a place for it. We all like junk TV every once in a while, so I'm not criticizing, but I knew for me, um, the feeling that I got from hearing you know, a story about a Jonathan Jones and how he went from where he was to podcasting and a podcasting mentor now. And I've had people on who are in the fashion industry or um, are in the inspiration industry, you know, all of those things. And I wanted to talk about day-to-day -day stories. Um, one of my guests had recently, her husband had passed, you know, just, you know, unexpectedly. And for her to come on and to be able to talk about it and to exude that power, that will change the life of somebody else who's having a bad day. Um, that they see that, you know, this person, you know, lost a loved one and they are still kicking in there. They're still encouraging people. So let me do the same. Let me continue to grind on. Let me continue to move on and let me continue to, you know, explore different ways to be successful. So I wanted something that was positive and uplifting. That's good. That's good. That's good. So if you if you have not tuned in yet, if you have not tapped in, y'all definitely need to tap in. Definitely need to tap in with, with Brother Jackson and the Ridiculously Blessed Podcast. Catch, catch, catch that that streaming video experience on YouTube. It's, it's good when you get to see the people and you get to hear the people and you it's a different level of connection. It's just a different level of connection. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's authentic, man. You're gonna hear like you might hear my dog bark in the background. You might see the video freeze. It, this is all organic, authentic. I, you know, I do the editing and everything. So it, it's, it's me, but it's real people doing real things. And man, I don't know what I would do without the podcasting experience. Um, if nobody else watched, I would still do it because I enjoy the interaction and conversation with the people that have been on. So that, that's, you know, like they said, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. So um, podcasting doesn't feel like work anymore. The anxiety is gone. I've gotten over that. And man, this is just, it just feels great. Man, that, that's good. That's good. That's good. I think, think you, you queued up a great, great transition because I like to like to end just, just with, with a little bit of fun, a little bit of fun. And this is a, this is a segment I call this or that. All right. And I, I'm going to ask you just a okay. few rapid fire questions and you're going to pick one or the other. So are you are you ready, Tim? Are okay. you ready? Easy enough, man. Easy enough. All right. Man. All right. Here we <laughs> go. Hamburger or taco? Oh, man. I'm going to say taco. No meat, man. Uh, no meat, though. <laughs> OK. OK. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> OK. We, uh, would, would, would you would you rather bath or a shower? shower okay okay what what's worse yeah. laundry finish it off cold uh, man. what you do the cold showers <laughs> yeah man gotta do that last 30 seconds cold man it's eye opening in the oh, morning oh my goodness it, 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 well, what, <laughs> that, that's, that's another topic for another day no topic for another day okay what what's worse doing the laundry or doing the dishes Ooh, doing the laundry okay nice car or nice home interior nice home interior okay work hard or play hard Oh, play hard. F football football <laughs> or basketball? Oh, man. Ugh. That's a tough one. Basketball. basketball. Okay. And then rich, rich friend or loyal friend? Loyal. There you go. See, loyal. There we, that was it. That yep. was painless. You see, that, 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 that was All painless. Right. That, that, that was painless. That was painless. So now, now I'm I'm going I'm to I'm kick you the mic, uh, Tim, and I want you to go ahead and just just give people your, your final thought, man. What What's, what's a final thought? that you want to leave with the people to encourage the people you have the mic, Tim Jackson. All right. All right. So one of the biggest thing in my life is to create rhythm. The reason I say this is like in basketball, when you're in the zone, everything is natural. You know, you can't miss a shot. Everything works for you. 
that's what you need that I want you to create in life is rhythm. Um, I want you to know that God did not create us to just be standing still. He didn't create us to just sit on our talents. We all have something hidden inside of us. We were created to do a job. We are a tool. We were built for this. And so look inside, reach inside, check your, with yourself, self-assess, and find out what you were built to do. And your life will forever be changed. There it is. Hey. There it is. There it is. Man, Tim, I appreciate you taking taking the time to to, to tap in. Let, let people know where they can follow you. Let people know where they can follow you and connect with you on the social yeah. medias and everything yeah. like that. We can't forget that. All right. You can you can find us definitely on Instagram. Uh Ridiculously Blessed Podcast is on Instagram. But uh you can find me at I okay, let me make sure I got this right. I dot M dot built the number four this um on instagram you can find me there and um tap in send me a dm or you can send me an email at info at i am built for this.com and we can get together on it and i'm telling you if you're ready to change your life and you just need some simple steps please tap in we can work together and and even if you just need a little bit of word of encouragement man this this group is special I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen some things over the last six months to a year that's unreal. People have taken, you know, the little steps that I've gave, given them and gone to a level way beyond what I dreamed. Um, so I know that God is touching lives out here in this world and, and you can be a part of that. Don't think that um, where you are is not the starting point. It is. Start somewhere. And man, let's live the lives that we've always dreamed of and envisioned. There it is. We're gonna make sure to have all all Tim's information down in the show notes to make it easy to to connect with him um, because he's definitely doing some great work, and I'm I'm excited for him and the lives that 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 he's changing. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. And remember that this is the place to where we help you establish your platform so that you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Till next time, peace and God bless. I want to let you know if you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a consultant, and you're looking and struggling to elevate your leads and to accelerate your credibility, you want to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. There we have a free training coming up. So go to getpaywithpodcasting.com so that you can ultimately put your credibility on Accelerate, all right? Be able to generate more leads and take your voice and be able to turn it into a profitable cash machine.